We're back with the TAC. I have a new capstan belt. This is an SBS 8.4. The original belt, when we measured the uh, circumference, was 9 inches. When I went into the electronic supply shop, I figured it was going to be like a, an 8.4 or an 8.5 inch belt. So I told him it was a 9 inch circumference when I measured it using a string. He hauled out his calculator. Come up with an 8.4 as the size that we should be putting in. The factory you use is normally about 7%, so you take your size in inches and you divide by 1.07. And it'll come up about 8.4. That's normally how you calculate out the size of belts you use. Put all my screws in my little screw container here so I don't lose them. So this one, remember we had this apart and we replaced the, the belt that drives the um, cam system the loading cam we just have to take out a couple more screws on the bottom here <clears throat> take the mechanism out and replace the belt no, because everything else has been done we've replaced the loading belt and uh, cleaned up the the pulley and the capstan flywheel and lubricated it so now all that remains to do on this is just replace the belt which I didn't have the other day so we'll just take the mechanism apart again this is going to be a quick and uh, dirty video because most of the work on this has been done I was having this other camera on here as I cranked up my tension and everything on this uh, this tripod because the other camera I shot with was much heavier than this one and uh, had a tendency to move on its own I don't know if you remember the, the, the prior work we did on this but I cleaned up the, the flywheel and the motor and basically all I need to do today is we just have to take this bracket off so that I can separate the bracket so I can slip a belt around the flywheel and over the pulley here. That's what needs to be done. And um, might help if I can find my number one Phillips screwdriver but in a jam this will do the job just fine so I have to just loosen off or remove one screw here from this bottom bracket so they can swing it out of the way so that they can take out these two screws that hold the bottom half of the the motor bracket in place I don't even have to remove this completely I just have to take it off enough that I can slip the belt around and I don't necessarily want to remove it all the way because there are wires and stuff attached to it I just have to remove it enough like this so that I can get in here with the belt and slip the belt around the flywheel and then I can put the mechanism back together put the screws into it
the same on the bottom. Put the two screws into the bottom to hold the bracket in place and the base assembly mounting bracket. And now we just have to thread the belt over top of the motor, which isn't too difficult. Just place it over, give it a bit of a spin, and make sure that there's no kinks in it. There we go. Now you can see the motor spinning there when I turn the flywheel. And now we can set the chassis back in place, being careful not to pinch any wires while we're doing so. Closing the, the cassette door like this is a good way to hold the chassis uh, relatively in place so that you can put the screws in the bottom. The top plate again drops into place and that holds the chassis in its proper work hole alignment. I just dropped a screw inside here which I'll have to retrieve momentarily but we'll get a few of these screws in here to hold it in place in the meantime. The unit is now basically ready for testing, so I'll plug the power in, turn it on. So here we go, we've got the headset here. I don't have an amplifier in here to hook this thing up to, so I'm just going to put on the headset. And i got a recording that was made actually on my, my Techniques RSM-275, the one I showed you repairing the other. Well, more appropriate to make a recording on a 30-year-old Sony Type 3 Ferrochrome. Probably one of the best tapes I've ever heard. This is a normal bias tape. The sound quality off these things is just incredible. Uh, I Sony phased these things out like 30 years ago. And when I worked for the Sony Corporation, I had the opportunity to buy uh, a quantity of these and I bought some. And I actually have a, a sealed box that I've never opened. And this is one tape that was the last tape from the last sealed box when I was still using cassettes. So what a, how appropriate then to use a classic cassette on a classic deck to test it out. So I got some royalty free music recorded on here so that uh, they won't get upset with me. It plays.
Sound quality of this thing is excellent. I recorded this in DBX on my other deck. The neat thing about this deck is this deck has an automatic calibration system and if I can only remember how to set this thing up, I'll show you how to go through that. I've got my little screwdriver sitting here so I can adjust the speed. I'm just going to listen to this and see if the speed's off. It sounds pretty close. Now, I'm not uh, using any test equipment to set the speed up myself. I'm using the best piece of test equipment that I have and that's my ears. I have perfect pitch so I know ex I know this tune quite well and I know the key it's in and I know the exact sound of it and uh, I'm just listening to the speed here and it's sounding right on pitch so there we go I've got this tape deck now working let's go a little bit ahead here you notice I've got the fast forward and rewind working too. I put a little bit of my magic rosin flux. This stuff here I showed on the uh, I showed this on the um, this stuff, which is basically solder flux. What makes this stuff work is well, it's the chemicals that are in it. It has uh, ethanol and it has rosin and it has butanol and. Uh, they will soften up rubber and uh, the rosin will actually make it almost rough. It's very quite sticky. The stuff is a very sticky compound. Uh, rosin, of course, coming from tree sap, right? Anyway, I just put a little bit, a drop of it, not even a drop, a fraction of a drop. I'll show you where I put it on here. I'll just take the camera off the stick so you can see this uh, right down in here. You will see the little rubber roller in the middle of the... That's the nice thing about using this toy camera is that I can actually get it in close. The little uh, rubber roller that you see right down there in the middle of the screen, that's the uh, the drive shaft for the uh, reels. And I just put a, just a, not even a drop, just a little tiny bit, a fraction of a drop. Just put it on the end of a piece of wire and just dabbed it on there and then ran the tape through. And um, just the process of it spinning around and, and working into the gears and working into the, the, the drive wheels here that's got the roller coated and uh, our problem with slipping uh, is gone and that will last for, for forever as long as I'm going to be using this thing anyway I'm just going to get past this material yeah yep. some other music recorded on here I guess we'll turn the tape over and I'll just I'll do my calibration on the other side. Um, we'll zero the counter and uh, see if I can remember how to calibrate the tape on this because this machine here will actually calibrate um, to the tape if I can remember how to do it. It's an automatic system. I just have to remember the process. Reference. Where is it here? Memory. put it into I believe I have to put it into record first and then I can hit manual here we go and it will set up the record I can do it manual or automatic it's on manual now and I just set this up I have to bring this up to here for the fine bias so I adjust the fine bias here we go and I'm up to the normal type of tape depending on the type of tape that you put in, uh, you adjust the bias up or down. Actually, this is the level, the bias. I have to press a button to get to bias. So you adjust your level to bring your level up to zero dB, your calibration here. And if I hit, um, where is it here, to go to bias. Memo one. Oh, yeah, do the other side. So you do both channels, and then and then it switches to bias. The light goes to bias, 
and then you bring your bias up until you get to your and see if I go up you see the level dropping here that's because I'm over biasing the tape so I turn my bias down this is actually recording a tone on the tape and I want to bring my bias up to maximize I want to maximize the signal here so I I go up and down until I get to that zero or the highest level okay so that I've, I've equalized it there and I press uh, memory again is it or is it manual I forget manual there we go and then I do the other channel the same thing do the bias on the other channel get maximized and now it's back to level so I can check my levels again so my level here is coming up to the to the marking for normal which is the plus one hit manual again check my level bring my level up again to try and get the levels balanced there we go hit, buy, hit manual again now it goes to bias zero bias zero good now if I hit the memory button and one or do I have to hold it memo and that should store it I think Do I have to stop it first and then press? Oh, now I stop it and I press memory and you'll see the lights flashing and I press memo one. And now I've just stored a custom bias setup for this tape. If I rewind that tape and listen to it, there should just be a tone, a high frequency tone. Yep, there's a tone on here. It's just a, it's just a 440, 440 hertz tone. Oh. And then it goes to a kilohertz tone for the bias. So when you're in, when you're in uh, the first setting, when I hit the manual calibration, it goes to level, and I'll do it again just to show you guys how this is done. So you put it in record, record pause. Then you hit the the calibration button manual, and it goes to the first setting here. The first setting you do is you bring the level up to try and get to the settings for the tape. And I'm, I'm up all the way there and it's going to zero. So then I press the manual button again. And now it goes to the right channel and I do the same thing. And then I hit manual again. And now I go, it switches to bias. And then I want to try and get my bias level up to the, the, the one here for, or actually try to maximize it. If I, if I go up, see the signals dropping now because I'm increasing my bias current if I go down too low the signal will then drop again so I want to try and get this get my bias so that I'm as high as I can I hit manual again it goes to the other channel my bias is good there good hit manual again now I'm back to the the level setting and I'm, I'm a little bit high I'm just flashing between uh, plus one and plus two for a normal tape you want to try and bring it right up to about plus one hit manual again try to get the other one to balance the other channel is not quite balancing, so I'm going to take, I'm going to go back, hit manual, it puts me into bias mode, hit get back to level. I'm just going to bring the other channel down so that it's about the same, so that my level is the same for both. Of course, my tape runs out. <laughs> my tape runs out, of course, yeah. Um, so to memorize that into memory number two, I just press and hold the memory button, and while I'm holding it, I tap memo two. Now I can select. I can either select memo one, memo two, or I can set the reference, which is the one that is preset into the machine itself. That's how you set up the bias on this TAC. And this is to say, this was a, a, a very high-end deck. And now what I have to do is one of these two decks that I just repaired is going to become my deck that I use in my studio. And I'm going to have to evaluate the two of them and do some serious recording and serious playback off of the best quality source that I've got. And uh, whichever one I think has the best performance is going to be going into my equipment rack. Uh, the thing I really like about this deck here is the, the bias adjustments. It has the onboard calibration tones. So you can set up to each individual tape individually. Um, and it really it works great. It's a great sounding deck. The strengths to the, the techniques, direct drive, capstan motor, uh, quartz lock, you know that that speed is right. 
it doesn't drift. Unless the motor burns out, it's a quartz lock motor, it's going to be correct. This one here has a conventional motor that you can adjust the speed. So they both got their strengths. If the Techniques deck was a three head deck, then it would be a no brainer as to which one I'd be using and which one will become my spare. I'll have to do some serious listing and decide which one I'm going to use. But both very high end decks. Um, I'm going to hang on to both of these ones because. Um, I know that the, the, the RSM275 is a very sought after unit and I could unload that thing no problem and probably get back what I paid for it, but I'm not going to. I'm going to hang on to it and the same goes, goes for this one here. And who knows, I read in the paper that cassettes are making a comeback, so you never know. The value of these things could become even more and more. Anyway, there it is. It's fixed. I have another Techniques deck that I'm going to get to. Uh, in the coming uh, weeks, it's uh, another DBX deck, but it's a it's a basic one, and you'll see the difference in it. But just a last look inside this thing before I close it up. Again, um, it's a nicely laid out machine. Got a couple boards in here. Um, very high tech, very high end, um, very nice sounding three head deck. So three head, three motor, just like the uh, the Techniques. Techniques uses a, a, a direct drive capstan motor. This one's a belt drive capstan motor. And it used uh, one motor that would control both the tape reels and load and unload the mechanism. And it used a third motor, which is a low power motor for the take up spool on play only. So it had a high torque direct drive for fast forward and rewind, which really gripped tape from one end to the other quickly and a separate motor for this for on playback and record that was a very low torque motor and it used the main fast forward rewind motor to load and unload the tape this one here has a dedicated motor for loading and unloading the, the heads and one motor that is used for fast forward rewind and play and then a third motor just for the caption so they're both three motor decks they're both excellent quality and i hope you enjoyed this thanks for watching we'll see you in the next one